Hello, it's Rob Cornish. I hope you're well. And as I'm recording this video, it's just over a week since I installed Windows 10 on my computer. So what I'd like to do is say a few words about Windows 10, which will help you if you're uh, thinking about upgrading to it. And if you're already using it, I also want to give you a bit of a warning about Windows 10 as well, which may be something that you're not fully aware of. We'll talk about that in a minute, but first of all, I have to say, in summary, I love it. I think it's a really good operating system. I never used Windows 8 because um, I just didn't like the idea of it and there's too much, too many bad reviews about it. But Windows 10 is great because it's just simple and that's all I want. I just want a nice clear desktop with a big old start button at the bottom left. And you can see that it slightly changed the start button. I probably won't use these sort of image squares and stuff on the right hand side, but it's basically just got everything uh, at my fingertips. Um, it's very fast, it's snappy, and my computer is running a lot quicker as well. I always thought that um, the way computers get slower is actually to do with the sort of hardware itself, but I think after upgrading to Windows 10, it's probably just because of the operating system. So my old computer, which was running Windows 7, took, I'd say, probably a couple of minutes to actually you know, so I could use it after I click the power button. Windows 10 now on the same computer, but it's just upgraded to Windows 10, takes about 30 seconds. So it switches on a lot quicker. And also when you're using it, it just feels a lot more snappy. I, you know, I can click applications, they load quicker. Um, I can change the options. It's just got a nicer feel to it. The other thing that I'm doing is being quite selective over what I install. I've made the mistake in the past of installing loads of different applications and all this kind of stuff. And that's one of the things that slows your computer down. So um, to give you an idea, basically all I've done is installed Google Chrome, which is my favorite web browser, Notepad++, which is a free text editor. It's an absolutely brilliant piece of kit. Um, you can find it online and uh, I use that for my to-do list and also a lot of other files and, and templates and stuff that I use uh, in my business. Microsoft Office 365 which has Word, Excel and PowerPoint you can see down there. Skype, um, Snagit which is I use pretty much at, at, well every day I use it probably three or four times um, which just takes um, screen captures. Um, of, of areas of the screen and finally Camtasia which is what I'm using right now to record this video for you and that's it okay um, actually there's one more thing which is Dropbox you can see down here which I've um, added um, and all that does is just keep all my files um, online on the cloud so it doesn't matter whether I'm using this computer or my laptop or I'm on the road and I'm in a hotel lobby somewhere or something I've got all the files I need for my business right there at my fingertips. Now the other thing that I think is quite useful is down here there's a task view. So if like me you occasionally get um, a bit overwhelmed with all the different programs and applications you have open you can just click there and it really just gives you this um, kind of grid view where you can see all the different applications you've got um, so you can close them, tidy things up, or go to a specific application. So maybe I want to go to Windows Media Player um, and you know select a different Eagles song to listen to or something like that. Now, what about this warning that I was talking about earlier? Well, let me show you this. If we close this window and I go down to the start, and we'll go to settings and we'll go to privacy. Now all of these items down the left hand side control what Microsoft and what other applications on your Windows 10 computer can access and by default as far as I can tell they're all switched on so let me show you this in the general tab you know let apps use my advertising ID for experiences in other words advertising across apps when I installed Windows 10 that was on as were all of these Location, it can find your location by default. I've turned it off. It can use your camera um, by default. I've turned that off. Same with the microphone. Um, it wants to get to know you, right? Um, but I don't want it to get to know me, so I've turned that off as well. And there are all sorts of other things here which are turned on by default. Now, 
you know, obviously it's a subjective thing. You might not be worried about this or you, you might be completely fine and want it all switched on and that's fine but you should just be aware of it um for me personally i don't like it I, um so i just switch everything off i don't really want microsoft or any other apps knowing you know where i am or what i'm doing or any of my you know information i'm sure that there's still you know they still get data even if you turn all of this off you know privacy is a big issue across all sorts of uh um, companies which are all trying to get this sort of big data because it's just so uh, profitable for them to do so but anyway I thought I'd just point that out to you because it's certainly not something that you know you're made aware of when you install Windows 10 you know Microsoft are kind of not probably that keen to actually make you uh, uh, make you fully aware of what's going on but other than that, like I say, I think it's a great uh, application. If you're thinking about upgrading, I'd go for it. I think it's, I don't regret it at all. I think it's, uh, it's really improved my day-to-day -day working. And it's on a wider point, it's really interesting. I think that Microsoft, in my opinion, um, have got it really right. They've, they've done Windows 10 the right way. Whereas Windows 8 was you know, widely considered as a bit of a disaster. And the difference, is that they've listened to their customers. They've got, they've got, this has gone through a large beta phase where they had, they solicited feedback from lots of users before the official release and they've designed it around what people actually want rather than taking an arrogant view um, or a sort of inward looking view where they um, decide what people um, want. So, and that's the same in your business. So if you're doing information products or software products, as I do, I do both of them, then you want to find out what um, people actually want. Yes, your own opinions are important, but they're, they're subordinate. They're, they're less important than uh, the customer's view. So one of the things that I do, and you've probably heard me talk about this before, is just run surveys. So occasionally you'll see me email the list, my subscribers, asking them a question um, and sending them to a survey form. I have surveys, Google Drive uh, surveys built into my autoresponders. I also have links to surveys in, custom, in product download areas. So after people have the product, um, they can leave me feedback. And I also ask particularly, what don't you like? So d stop looking for for things that people like. Ask them what they don't like, what's missing. And what I found is that there's, it's often really small things that just irritate people or they're annoyed by it or they think just oh it's, I wish that was included and it's not and it's just things that you've not heard you've not thought of yourself and they're quite often very easy to fix so what that enables me to do and will enable you to do as well just like Microsoft had done is is just make your product better and that just gives your business more longevity makes you know your customers lives better uh, your life better because you make more money because you're selling a better product refunds are lower customer loyalty is higher and all that, loads of other good stuff as well so i think you know if you were drawing a kind of uh, um, lesson from this then perhaps that might be one but I hope you've enjoyed this video good talking to you and speak soon